Hi again, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be siphoning for the last time my ginger wine. So I'm going to start by removing the airlock so I don't want any water to get in there. Just leave it there. Remember that I covered the, uh, the container with, uh, with the old black t shirt so the lights. Don't interfere with the, with the, side, the process of fermentation. Since I do everything in my countertop, it's always light. So I'm going to make sure that when I start siphoning my wine, make sure that everything is locked. I previously this morning sterilized my, all my utensils. My big funnel thing. Just a little. Okay, that's the right thing. I'm going to start siphoning this wine. It might take more than it. Take a couple of minutes. In the meanwhile, I got it siphoning. This is going to be uh, Asti, Espumante, or Sparkling in English, wine, right? Espumante is Spanish, Asti is Italian. Early in the morning, I just sterilized all my bottles. The difference from this bottle, for the Espumante bottles have to be, when you buy it, the bottles that said that it's for Espumante or for Asti or Sparkling wine, it's a little, Water and it has like a like a little bump in here, but it comes in cases of 12, so I'm going to probably be getting maybe 24 or 28. And another different thing that you have to buy that is different from everything that I told before, the, the corks are not corks. It's a cork but it's plastic. So with this for espumante. You do not put them in the hot water. You just sterilize them in the, in, the, in the water where you sterilize your containers. Remember, everything you're going to be used has to be sterilized. So, when you, if you want to do a fumante, you have to buy this cork, the plastic one that says it's for, for a fumante. Actually, they come in a bag like this. You can see it says champagne. Stoppers, right? But these are the, the ones that you use when you want to do a, a, a sparkling wine. Then you have to buy the champagne wire mesh. It's a plastic. It's not plastic. It's metal. And then I'm, when I do the first one, I'll, I'll show you what to do with these. And Another thing that is different is the cup. In the wine, it's a plastic thing for the regular wine. For the sparkling wine, it's something like this. It doesn't need to be, uh, you don't use the hit, uh, gun. You don't need to hit it up. It's, it's like an aluminum cover. And I'll show you how to, to put it on at the end. I'm going to be putting for five, this was about five gallons of um, wine. I'm going to put four cups of sugar to make sure that it's really, I want this one to be really, really sparkling, like a champagne mostly. Earlier, I measured the alcohol content on this ginger wine and you're gonna be surprised it was really high it's on the 25% I started with 25% of sugar and I end up with a 25% that means that it's very strong wine You want to make sure that you don't get not too much of the yeast. 
since this is going to be an espumante wine, what I did, I didn't wait until the last, you know, fermentation completely, completely stops because I want the yeast to keep on fermenting a little more when I put them in the bottle, that's what it makes it espumante. Some people wait until the, the, the fermentation completely stop and then at the end they add a little more yeast, but it's, it's, it's useless. You wait until you, you can see, when you see that it's still coming some bubbles and the wine is almost transparent, it's pretty clear. I'm gonna show you with the very, very last of the liquid that is a little more, you know, it's not as clear as when I started, but you see. Well, you can't see, but uh, you see that the wine is not completely transparent. That's because it's bubbling, still bubbling. So that's what you want. But you need these type of bottles in, in the, 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 the corks, the plastic one for champagne in the wire. Otherwise, if you start to do an espumante wine like I did in the beginning and put them in a regular bottle, in a couple of days, that cork is going to go up. And believe me, it scares you the first time you hear that the explosion. So this I don't need. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna bring I'm gonna leave that there because I'm going to add. Remember that since this wine is for you, your families and your friends, it doesn't require much measuring. If you may put a little more sugar or less sugar, big deal. You're not going you can't sell this wine, it's for you. So I'm going to make it a little sweeter because it's, now it's not completely dry, but it's in the dry side. So I want to make it a little sweeter. So I'm going to add four cups of sugar for almost, almost five gallons of wine. going to start like a reaction in there. You're going to see bubbles. Oh yeah. I'm still moving it so the sugar. An easy way to do it is that you get a little bit of wine from the from the container and dissolve the sugar in another cup of this and you butter it but I love to see the reaction see now the wine looks kind of a murky it doesn't look transparent at all because remember it's still fermenting now I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to put it on top of the counter. I'm going to close it so we can pull it up. And I'm going to start bottling this one. Okay. Remember, ask somebody to help you. This, this is not completely a five gallons. It may be half a quarter maybe an eighth or an inch to get see what I was telling you about the bubbles in the cup that means it's gonna be a good espumante okay time to bottle I got my two stools one to sit down and the other one put the bottle since this is a little lower maybe you at home have a stool that is just perfect I got a little uh, box put 
a little towel in the top so I don't make a mess. glasses so you can see. Remember, never fill the bottle all the way to the top. When it gets to about that much, then you stop. Since this is going to be espumante, you're going to see, if you do it really quick, it's going to be a lot of bottle, bubbles coming up. So when you get to about this much, you're going to slow it down. So you have a space for the, the process. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start fast. I'm going to put my fingers because that's where I'm, I want this the liquid to get to that point. When it gets closer, like I said before, just lower because it's a lot of bubbles. thing in there and then I'm going to hit it with something that is not metal and close them. These are a little too hard but you cannot use the, the corker that I have for these. on the making since this is the first time I'm going to do this espumante in these bottles I don't have a rubber mallet so I'm going to use one of the rocks that I have in the kitchen to smash garlic I'm going to wrap it on a towel and then I'm going to smash this box down The last one. See what I did when I started smashing over there. I found that this area in the corner where the countertop has more base and the bottom is easier to, to smash. Put something in the bottom like a folded towel so you don't break the bottle. Yeah, when you see that you can see the bottle about this much you can see the green in the back the cups are not completely hollow it has like a little indentation there that's where the bottle the top of the bottle is supposed to end okay so after you finish I'm gonna go over all of them to see that they all about this one maybe needs a little more smashing in the, in this. I can see the green in the back. So I'm gonna put a little metal. Then I'm going to figure out how to tie it. Before I did this, I did 
this some espumante that was not so much like a champagne, it was a sparkling wine, but in the regular bottles, and I put them in, after I bottled it, I put them in, in the refrigerator to control the, the fermentation so they didn't explode. Put my finger in top. You see that the, the metal has it's round and at the end has like a square thing. So you can use you can use a, a screwdriver. The object is that this have to close. This have to be really tight over here. See? It's kind of tricky. Let me see how much can I tie it. This is the first time I'm doing this with this system. You have to cut the wire. I don't think that. Because see, the bottle, these fumante bottles, the champagne bottle, have this little thing in there. So when the, the wine is fermenting, it's, I don't think. If you're trying to get the cork, the, the, the wire will hold there. So I think that looks really pretty and safe. So let me do another one. Now I'm going to start putting the cups on it. comes without instructions so while I'm doing this I'm learning okay finally we figure it out see this is where the, the cup has like a this glue right so you're gonna go the way that this one is glued that's the way you're gonna go. So hold the bottle and twist your hand around. This is more or less the best it's gonna look. the back. 
hold it here and place. Okay, now we break and I was able to cover. See, I figured out if I put this thing on the back, I leave the opening towards me. Okay, so this one I didn't break this one. Perfect. At the very end, we figure an easy way. I put this thing in the back, like I told you before, the little hook when you tie the, the wire. The opening of the champagne cap to the front so what we did was we start going like this with our hands and then we just twist a little not too much because if you twisted it too much the little hook in the back will break the cup okay so that's with this system that's about it. That's all you can you can do. This one is a different bottle, so it has it was thinner, so it looks a little different. But I'm gonna start putting the labels now. I got my labels here. So I have uh, my name, Ginger Wine, Sparkling Semi Dry, and um, this is a special edition because it's, it takes about two years for the ginger in my daughter's garden to grow. That's the ginger that I'm using. And uh, I'm going to wait maybe two more years for the ginger to grow, so that's why it's very special. Edition, this one, it's not being able to, I'm not gonna be able to make this one like every, every, every two or three months. Okay, so I'm, in order for me, for these labels to all get same, the same height, I'm going to get something. So I get the same height in all the labels. See, you can look in the kitchen, I'm pretty sure you have things that you can use. And when you print the labels for, and for regular wine, since the bottle is a little longer, we print the label this way. But the champagne bottles, they are smaller. I mean, not smaller. They wire in them, but they have this little thing here. You can, I'm gonna show you. If you put the, the label like this, it will not look good. You go, it will go over the little group that the bottle has there. So we print the label this way. how that looks with the champagne cup and okay, that looks good so now I'm gonna do this to all 30 bottles maybe it's a little not completely even so when you, if this happens to you, and then when you see the label is not even, if you do it right away, you won't have a problem fixing the label. I bent the label and try to get it there. It's just to have a, a guide. See the group is right here. So that's one of the label. There. That's a good looking bottle. Finally, we got a ginger wine. 
battle. We're able to find out the way for these things, the cups to look more, you know, pretty. And this is a, a, a wine that is a 25% volume by bottle. So when you're gonna serve it, serve it really cold in the champagne glass halfway. Don't fill the glass up. See until people get used to if they want to drink at all or maybe they don't want to drink at all because it's too strong. Because it's more or less in between a wine and a, and a liquor. The bottles, when you order the, the bottles, it comes in a box. Here's a box. You see, it comes set with separations. So what you want to do, now that you have to stock your bottles in the same box, it comes in 12. I have five bottles that they are too big, they don't fit in, in those I might put them in the refrigerator so we can drink next party. And um, keep it, keep it, don't put them in the garage. If, it's, if you don't have air conditioning in the garage, keep it in a closet inside the house where there is cool. And every, every once in a while check to see how, because this is the first time that I use this system with a, with a very, very sparkling wine. It's gonna be like a champagne. Um, another thing, another reminder that I wanna make. Um, just keep it inside. Check it in about a week or two, check it. Remember the white wines, you're supposed to drink it within a year of, uh, that you make the wine, so it, it tastes much better. This, if you wait about a week, and you open one of these bottles, you're going to probably get that effect of the champagne. So don't be afraid, cut the wire, pull this cover, cut the wire with a cutter, and let somebody to hold the bottle and then open the, you have to pull that cork. It's gonna be like a, like a champagne bottle. So I have, let me have the other. That's one case. Because I was counting that it was going to be maybe 24 bottles. It came out to be 30 bottles. So these fat ones don't fit in any of these boxes because I have extra boxes but they are too fat so those I'm going to put at the end of the refrigerator okay so now uh, if you want the recipe you can watch my video or you can go to my website and it will refer you to the video and uh, any question that you have you can ask my uh, in my website and I will try to to give answers to any question that you have. Remember, when you're doing a sparkling wine, always bottle your, your, your wine when still fermenting a little, but the wine has to be clear enough that you can drink it already. And if you want it more, add more sugar, you can do it at the time. With, uh, with, uh, with this wine, you don't put the, um, the stabilizer because you want the, ge the, the yeast to continue fermenting that's what creates the, the, the champagne like the, the sparklings but uh, in, in any re in the regular ones you're going to add before you add the sugar you're going to add the potassium sorbate wait a week siphon it and you bottle it in regular bottle of wine like I showed you before with a uh, with, uh, the other wines that I did, um, the cantaloupe, uh, the sapote wine, and all the other wines that I've been showing you through, through my videos. But with uh, if any question, you can go on my website and you can ask me questions and I'll be able, more than welcome to answer you. Thank you.